This was a fun manga chapter, but it made a lot of people look stupid and it made Trunks the ultimate simp. And let's get straight into this video. Now, to start off with the positives, it definitely was a very unique direction which changes the end of Z, in which Goten and Trunks originally seemed like they had no desire to fight and were perfectly comfortable living a normal life. But this, however, completely switches that and makes it seem like Goten and Trunks are bored in this completely peaceful world, which is actually a positive thing, because if you want to follow the original ending of Dragon Ball Z and the original Dragon Ball manga, it would be extremely boring because it was meant to be peaceful. So giving the characters this itch to want to go out and fight is definitely a unique way to change the show. And also, another cool thing too is how the fictional character, Clean God, even though these are fictional characters too, but the video game character, Clean God, is essentially the basis to which Go to the Trunks base their superhero antics off of, instead of it being Gohan. I think that's actually very realistic, and I feel like it's very natural for young males to have, like, a fictional icon that they basically follow in their footsteps, very similar to how many people in real life look up to Dragon Ball characters as fictional models to base their lives on. So, all of that said, we get into where Trunks becomes a total idiot and where Trunks is a total simp. Now, the first thing to talk about is the fact that Trunks is not good with computers when there was a cybersecurity attack, but it gets even worse than this, because after this moment, we see a point where Trunks wants to basically change in the open where people can possibly see him, which you would think a guy that can fly super fast could easily go someplace and go into a bathroom or some location in the blink of an eye and change, but he wants to do it out in the open where he bumps into his grandparents. But if you think Trunks is a total idiot, we got something in store for you because Dr. Briefs is a complete idiot on his own, as he can't recognize his own grandson. He can't directly see through the visors, which is a direct difference from what we saw with Great Saiyan Man that wore a full helmet. So the mere fact that you can basically see Trunks' entire face and you can't even recognize him is something interesting. Then, Trunks also flies away right in front of Dr. Briefs. Now, Dr. Briefs can put two and two together and say, Wait a minute, only a few people on the planet are capable of flying. Wait a minute, our pet dinosaur also recognizes Trunks and only warms up to people that he's familiar with. And then when you also factor in that his voice was familiar, you would think that the smartest man on the planet could put all of these different things into context and make an assessment that that character is Trunks. But Dr. Briefs is an idiot in his own right as he basically wanted to buy Pan an aircraft because she's not capable of flying yet. Which is hilarious because Pan's only around three years old and he's totally unaware of what she's capable of. Besides all of that and the whole Clark Kent syndrome where he takes his glasses off and you have absolutely no idea who he is, we also get the part where Trunks becomes a total simp. Now throughout this manga chapter, Trunks basically gets cold shouldered or rejected by Mai three times. This is the same girl who was madly in love with the future version of himself, and Trunks has a huge advantage of being identical to the future version of himself, so he doesn't have to worry about attraction, he just has to have that intrinsic manhood in himself in order to attract Mai. Now, I don't want to sound like a dating expert, but Trunks was trying way too hard. And this is a very weird dynamic because Mai is a lot older than Trunks, so he's basically simping for a significantly older woman, even though that significantly older woman is now technically younger than his mother, even though in terms of, like, existence years, she's actually older than his mother. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, was it a situation in the future timeline where you just didn't really have a lot of options, so you kind of fell for this significantly older woman that also appears super young? For the first time when he was having a conversation with her and Mai didn't seem like she was interested in conversing with him, then the second time, she basically rejected his chance to go to the movies with her, and then we also have to look at this and remember that this is Trunks, who is the son of Bulma, who has a lot of money, and a lot of clout in this Dragon Ball world, so you would think that it wouldn't be that hard considering the fact that the ball is on his court, but considering his intrinsic value as a man, he's not utilizing it to its full potential. And we see this later on the third time after Trunks wipes out all of the enemy bots and zombies, where she basically has no time for him again. Now, he could easily ask Bulma to give her time off so that he could go on a date with her, 
But this once again shows that Trunks is not only a simp, but he's also an idiot who can't think logically. And Trunks completely simping for Mai was one of the saddest things about this, but when you go back to looking at how he was interacted with Mai in Battle of Gods, he was already showing this kind of behavior. Which is kind of funny, because if you look at the future Trunks and future Mai dynamic, it's totally different, where Trunks never really simped for Mai, they were just kind of acting naturally, but it goes to show that when situations change and when you're in a different timeline where the stakes are completely different, characters can become completely different people. Now, we go back to Trump's being a total idiot. He rides a bike to school. Now, in an ultra-modernized world where Trunks can easily use some type of aircraft to fly to school a lot faster, or he can fly in the blink of an eye, there should be no excuse for Trunks being late, right? I mean, considering the fact that he can fly extremely fast, there are going to be those fans who say, Is he faster than the speed of light? Is he faster than the speed of sound? We're not here to get into a power scaling debate about his speed, or a speed scaling debate if you want to use more proper terms, but the point is, is that Trunks is extremely fast and he can fly to school faster than his classmates can read a page. But yet he chooses to go to school on a bike to obviously force a bunch of scenes of him interacting with the hot dog guy and saving that little kid from getting their face smashed in. So ultimately, that's another thing too. He doesn't realize the most logical way for him to get to school. But it gets even better than this because we find out that Trunks has two classmates that have the funniest names in the history of Dragon Ball. Compass and Rula. Now... I will say that it's interesting to see that Rula is a black female, and also if we look at Goten's friend who was unnamed, we get to see two normalized looking black characters, which is definitely really interesting for the Dragon Ball series, because, I mean, that's kind of a rarity, where you see normal looking black characters, because usually throughout Dragon Ball history, whenever you see a black character, they're usually over-exaggerated with their features, so that was a good thing. And seeing Compass and Ruler is definitely a direct contrast to what we saw in the past with Eraser and Sharpener, where they're basically just using school objects to name the characters. But I just think that Arissa and Sharpener were kind of like cool and more like, you know, down to earth. But Compass and Ruler are just a little too far out there. But when you create so many Dragon Ball characters, at some point you're going to start running out of names. But then we get to the ultimate point of Trunks being the ultimate coward. Trunks is afraid of ghosts. Now, before we say, well, Qua man, you know, you're being too picky with what you're saying in this video, have you ever thought about why it's so stupid that Trunks is afraid of ghosts? I'm gonna give you a few seconds to think about it because it should become pretty obvious to you why it's kind of funny why Trunks is afraid of ghosts outside of the fact that Goku and Vegeta came back to Earth as ghosts. It's because when Trunks fused into Gotenks, he used an attack called the Super Ghost Kamikaze Attack. And if you look at the character of Gotenks, Trunks was always the dominant personality in it. Meaning that his influence has a lot more say over Gotenks' influence, who's basically just a character that follows whatever the other characters tell him to do because Goten has no individual characteristics of his own. So with that said, Trunks is afraid of ghosts when in fact he was the one that essentially came up with the idea to use attacks in a very ghost-like way. Isn't that funny? Do the writers even pay attention to these things? But either way, going back, we also see that Trunks' classmates are also idiots for listening to Goten's story about ghosts controlling them when they clearly saw Trunks save them, which goes back to the whole Dr. Briefs thing of basically every single character in this manga chapter is a complete idiot because your eyes are lying to you directly into your face. And also remember that these characters live in a world where a lot of super characters are doing a lot of powerful things. So seeing somebody turn their hair blonde and fighting bad guys is not a rarity in this Dragon Ball world, considering the fact that so many people have seen it. Now granted, after the Boo arc, a lot of people's memories were erased, but there's still enough people that know what's been going on at planet Earth. So ultimately, when we put everything in its context, we can say that this would have been a great manga chapter if it was released in October, which it was originally planned to, but it got delayed, because I feel like the whole concept of zombies and evil robots and ghosts is just a really interesting thing to put in for a Halloween arc. 
And considering the fact that it's December, it's a little bit off in timing, but overall, it was a fun manga chapter. And it was also interesting to see the whole Walking Dead reference when we see Krillin talking to those characters, and they were basically talking about the Walking Dead and the zombies. So overall, it was a very good chapter. Don't get me wrong. It's interesting to see these characters solving small-scale issues. But the problem is, is that they made Trunks the biggest idiot on the planet, and they also made him the ultimate simp.